Welcome to Working with Special Parallelograms by Mr. Pi, the math guy. That's me, and I'm going to be your host today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the special parallelograms, specifically rectangles and rhombuses. So let's get this party started by taking a look at a theorem and a proof. Theorem. Each diagonal of a rhombus bisects two angles of the rhombus. As you can see, the first theorem of this lesson is dealing with the diagonals of a rhombus and that the diagonals of the rhombus bisect the angles in which they end up in. In this case, this diagonal WY is going to bisect angle XWZ and XYZ. And in our proof, we're given that the shape or the quadrilateral is a rhombus and we need to prove that segment WY bisects the angles I just mentioned, angled XWZ, XWZ, and angle XYZ. So the first part of this in any two-column proof really is to write down the given, and in this case our given is that we have a rhombus WXYZ. We cite that down as our given. Now what we're going to do to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 is that we're going to prove that the triangle on the top, triangle WXY, and the triangle on the bottom, WZY, are congruent and then angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So. To prove that the top triangle is congruent to the bottom triangle, I'm going to first be able to mark that WX is congruent to WZ, is congruent to ZY, is congruent to XY. And what I'm actually going to do and how I'm going to write this out is that WX is congruent to, that's this side here, congruent to WZ. And next, I will write it as yx is congruent to yz. What I've done by writing in, in that manner, but first off, the reason those are congruent is the definition of a rhombus. And the reason I want to write it that way is that now I have in this top triangle that this side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to this side. Next, what I'm going to establish using the reflexive property is that this side, WY, is congruent to itself. So segment WY is congruent to segment WY, and that's because of the reflexive property of congruence. So now I can make a triangle congruent statement that triangle WXY is congruent to triangle WZY. Again, that's the triangle on the top, WXY, congruent to the triangle on the bottom, WZY. And that's because of the side, side, side postulate for triangle congruence. Next, I can establish that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And that's because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or CP, CTC. And now that I got those angles congruent, that's enough since the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2 makes up the measure of the bigger angle in which we're trying to show that it's bisected, which we have since it's made up of two congruent angles. So the last statement is the proof statement. We've gone enough and we've shown enough to prove that 
segment WY bisects angle W or XWZ and angle XYZ. And that's by the definition of angle bisector. So we used triangle congruence to prove the parts that we needed to use to have congruent through corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Again, triangle congruence coming back to help us with quadrilateral congruence. Here's another theorem about a rhombus. The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So for, for this diagram for rhombus W, X, Y, Z, because of this theorem, we know or we can conclude that segment WY or the one diagonal is perpendicular to the other diagonal XZ or their form four right angles. And I didn't do a very good job of making a 90 degree marker and everything. You get the idea. The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. That's one of the cool properties we're going to be looking at in the coming example. Example one, we're asked to find the measures of the number of angles in a rhombus. Now, we've seen two theorems about rhombuses prior to this example. The first one said, each diagonal of a rhombus bisects two angles of the rhombus. We proved that. The second theorem said, the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So, keeping those in mind, let's attack this problem. Now, to find the measure of angle one, you can see it's next to an angle marked 79 degrees. And since the diagonals of a rhombus bisect those angles, we know that the measure of angle one is going to be 79 degrees. The measure of angle two, using the theorem that we just went over prior to example one, the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular, so the measure of angle two is going to have to be 90 degrees. The measure of angle three, maybe not so straightforward for you, but don't forget about the triangle angle sum theorem that says the measures of the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So in this case, to calculate the measure of angle 3, we take the measure of angle 3 plus 90 plus 79, and that's going to be equal to 180 degrees. Adding these two together, 90 plus 79, that gives us 169, equal to 180. Bring down the measure of angle 3, of course. And then when I subtract 169 from each side, 180 take away 169 is 11 degrees. So the measure of angle 3 is equal to 11 degrees. And I was able to determine that because I know this angle right here is 90 degrees because it's formed by the diagonals of a rhombus which form 90 degree angles. Now the measure of angle 4, there's a couple ways of doing it. If we see segment BD as the diagonal to line segment AB and line segment DC, then this measure, mark 79, is an alternate interior angle to this angle number 4. So that's one way, because the measure of angle 4 and the one mark 79 degrees are alternate interior angles. Therefore, they are congruent. Continuing on with these special parallelograms and their properties or their theorems, we move away from a rhombus and we get into the idea of a rectangle. The diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. So unlike the diagonals of a rhombus, the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. So for this diagram, segment XZ is going to be congruent to segment WY. Remember, the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. Here in example two, we're going to apply the theorem the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. One diagonal of a rectangle has a length of 8x plus 2. The other diagonal has a length of 5x plus 11. Find the length of each diagonal. Well, we have a little picture here just to give you an idea of visual. 
we know that the one length is being represented by 8x plus 2, and we know the other length is being represented by 5x plus 11. We have to set those two things equal to make our equation. So it's going to be 8x plus 2 equal to 5x plus 11. So we solve this equation to find the value of x. We can solve this equation by first subtracting 5x from both sides. What that does is eliminates the variable x from the right-hand side. And in the same step, we could subtract 2 from both sides, which gathers the constant terms on the right-hand side. On the left, we have 8x take away 5x, which leaves us with 3x. On the right, we have 11 take away 2, which gives us 9. Dividing each side by 3, we find our answer here, or our solution, is x is equal to 3. Now, I want to caution you. This is not the final answer. This is the value of x that will make this a rectangle. We need to substitute x back into either 8x plus 2 or 5x plus 11. So let's go 5x plus 11. We substitute that 3 in. So we end up with 5 times 3 plus 11. And when we simplify that, that gives us 26. So we know the length of the diagonal should be 26. We can check our answer by substituting 3 also into 8x plus 2. 8 times 3 is 24, and 24 plus 2 is 26. So both of our diagonals have a length of 26 in this example. I caution you, don't stop here. A lot of students want to stop there because they've solved the equation and they have their answer. Well, that doesn't necessarily answer what's being asked. We're told to find the lengths of the diagonals, so we have to take it one step further than most students are used to. Here we have three more theorems, and in reality, they are just the converses of the theorems that we've already seen in this lesson. The first theorem that I have listed here, if one diagonal of a parallelogram bisects two angles of the parallelogram, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. That's the converse of what we learned earlier in this video lesson. The second converse of our theorems is if the diagonals of a par parallelogram are perpendicular, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. And finally, if the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. So we could use these three theorems to prove shapes are either a rhombus or a rectangle. Example three, the diagonals of quadrilateral ABCD are perpendicular. The length of side AB is equal to 16 centimeters, and the length of side BC is equal to 8 centimeters. Can quadrilateral ABCD be a rhombus or a rectangle? Explain. To approach this problem, you really need to take the information given and determine if it fits into the theorems or the properties of either a rhombus or a parallelogram. Now, this first sentence, the diagonals of quadrilateral A, B, C, D are perpendicular because it tells us that the diagonals are perpendicular of the two special parallelograms we're talking about, rhombus or rectangle, that means it would have to be a rhombus. The, if the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, then it's a rhombus. But the next piece of information doesn't allow it to be a rhombus. It says the length of AB is equal to 16 and the length of BC is equal to 8. Well, for it to be a rhombus, all the sides have to be the same length. Therefore, can this be a rhombus or a rectangle? No, it cannot be because the diagonals are perpendicular. It must be a rhombus. Because of that information, it has to be a rhombus. But since the sides aren't the same, it's not a rhombus. But the sides are not the same length.
So it's neither a rhombus nor a rectangle. If it's a rectangle, the perpendiculars or the diagonals are not perpendicular. So it cannot be a rhombus nor a rectangle. Example four, explain how you could use the properties of diagonals to stake the vertices of a play area shaped like a rhombus. Well, a couple key words in this particular problem. We're going to be using the properties of the diagonals of a rhombus to map out or stake out a play area. Well, the properties we need to be concerned with. We know the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular and we know they bisect each other. And we need to use these two facts to stake out a play area. Well, what we're simply going to do then is draw two lines that are perpendicular to each other and that bisect each other. So this one is nine long and make this line here so it bisects it. And since we have the diagonals mapped out, they form 90 degree angles and meet at the midpoints, the resulting shape will be a rhombus. Now this one actually looks like it might be a square, but I don't think it is. And when we gather that up and maybe rotate it, rotate it on its side, more of traditionally looking like a rhombus in that manner there. It is almost a square, but not quite. But what you need to do is basically draw two lines that intersect each other at 90 degree angles, then they go through their midpoints.